New Year, New Pain, Gotham City, New Jersey, January 2024. It was a day after Bruce Wayne's birthday, and Bruce Wayne was in the Batcave working on a new vehicle. Alfred walks up to Bruce Wayne, and he asks, Master Bruce, what are you doing? And then Bruce says to Alfred, putting the finishing touches on my new winter vehicle. And he goes on to explain to Alfred, the winter Batmobile had its day. Now it's getting old, and it needs to be replaced. And then Alfred asks Bruce, so Master Bruce, what are you going to replace it with? Then Bruce Wayne says to Alfred, well, Alfred... Before his retirement, me and Lucius were working on a new vehicle, but of course there were a lot of delays that happened, and well, I had to finish this vehicle by myself, says Bruce to Alfred. Then Bruce closes the hood of the vehicle and pulls off the rest of the sheet covering the vehicle, and Alfred was shocked, and he says, My word, Master Bruce, that's your father's old Jeep Gladiator. And Bruce says, yes, Alfred, I took my dad's old Jeep Gladiator and modified it into the new Winter Batmobile, he says. And then he goes on to tell Alfred what he has done for the modifications of this new Winter Batmobile. And he goes on to say to Alfred, the first thing I did, Alfred, I gave the same armor as the current Batmobile. The second thing I did is I put in the modern powertrain from the current generation Jeep, so... It's capable of off-roading, plus the engine is the truck version of the Polaris V6, that's 6.6 .6 liters, and it's a CNG edition, so it runs on compressed natural gas. And of course, it has the usual modification, like twin scroll turbochargers, one for speed, the other for torque, a dry sump, and performance exhaust. Then Bruce went on to explain to Alfred furthermore, and further modifications I made were your usual multi-spectral front and back bumper mounted loaded cameras, but now they're side cameras. Plus, this is the first of my bat vehicles to use LiDAR instead of radar. And then Bruce says to Alfred, and for the final touch, heads up display unit on the windshield. And then Bruce goes on to show Alfred the weapon system. Bruce grabs his remote control and points it at the winter Batmobile and presses a button. Soon the camper shell in back, which had no windows, open up its side panels, revealing missiles. And Bruce says to Alfred, well, Alfred, these are homing missiles. And then Bruce presses another button and the roof of the camper shell opens up and reveals a turret. And Bruce says to Alfred, of course, laser turrets. And he says to Alfred, this is fully automated. Plus, like the previous Winter Batmobile, it has an EMP weapon. And then Bruce takes Alfred back again to the front part of the new Winter Batmobile, showing him the wench. And Bruce says to Alfred, of course, no Jeep is complete without a wench with a grapple that can be fired and then Bruce says and of course the front and back bumpers are reinforced for ramming and then Alfred asks Bruce so Master Bruce when are you going to take out the winter Batmobile and Bruce says tomorrow night I have to run a few updates to the onboard computer he says later that night in the city at a Wells Fargo bank in little Tokyo okay the bomb is set blow it Several mass thieves have blown the safe open inside the bank. Suddenly, a giant garbage truck backs into the front door, taking it out completely. The crash quickly triggers a blaring alarm throughout the bank. More mass men run into the bank and begin to clean it out completely while a familiar voice crackles through their radios. All right, boys. Clean out this bank completely. We have 30 seconds before the police mobilize and come here. It was Two-Face involved in another elaborate bank robbery. His men took all what they could and threw it all inside the garbage truck. Once they were done, the garbage truck pulls out and the men quickly clear out. When the police arrived, they found nothing. 
The next night, on top of police headquarters, the bat signal shines bright into the winter sky, and the commissioner was there in a heavy overcoat, shivering, waiting for his friend to show up. Sure enough, Batman shows up, scaring the crap out of him, and then the commissioner, of course, berates him for sneaking up on him, like he always does, and he says to Batman, Damn it, Batman, remember, I have a bat heart now! And then the Batman says... Sorry, Jim. Then the commissioner goes on to explain to Batman what happened, and then he hands Batman a manila folder, and Batman opens the folder and sees the pictures of the robbery and the police reports, and then the commissioner says to Batman, the garbage truck was stolen from the sanitation department during Christmas week, right from their lots. And as the commissioner turned around, still yakking away to Batman about what could be behind Two-Face motives, he then turns around again and sees that Batman was gone. And the commissioner says aloud, angrily, One of these days I'm putting a cowbell around his neck. Due to the heavy winter storms, the streets of Gotham were unusually quiet that night. Batman stood by a street corner, waiting for his new Batmobile to come and pick him up. When he was waiting, he says to Oracle over the communicator, Oracle, Two-Face is robbing banks using a stolen garbage truck. I need you to keep an eye on that truck and an eye on all the banks in the city. I don't know where he's going to hit tonight. No problem, Batman. Just give me the number of the stolen truck, and I could have the surveillance camera trained to keep an eye out for it. So Batman gives Oracle the number of the stolen garbage truck, and sure enough, she programs the computers in her clock tower to keep an eye on it via the city's red light cameras. Sure enough, the red light camera... On Dresher and 3rd Street had picked up the stolen garbage truck and Oracle relayed her findings to Batman. Batman was driving his winter Batmobile and then he quickly floors it. Moments later, at a city bank, there was Batman. He had arrived early before the robbers did. He waited patiently inside the bank when all of a sudden, the garbage truck backed in, completely obliterating the front door, and soon all of Two-Face's men come rushing inside. Batman quickly grapples to the upper levels of the bank and quietly watches from above as Two-Face's men run right to the vault and blast it open. Soon they begin cleaning out the vault along with other things on the first floor of the bank. From high up, Batman was watching them. They all looked like little army ants riled up, moving around in all directions. Meanwhile, below, Two-Face's men kept on cleaning out the bank vault and any other little stuff they could find in the offices, running to the garbage truck and tossing it inside. Then Oracle chimes in saying, Batman, the security system has been cut. And Batman pointed out that the alarm was still blaring overhead. And Oracle then points out that that's the only thing that's still working. It was on a separate circuit, she says to Batman. Then Batman decided to make his move, knowing that the alarm would cover any noise he would make, and began to stealthily go and take out Two-Face's men, one by one. But then the blaring alarm overhead quit blaring, and soon there was a dead silence in the bank. And Two-Face's voice comes over all the radios of the men, and it says... Gentlemen, it seems that this bank has a bat problem. Find him and kill him. Any man that kills him will get double their cut. Soon, Two-Face's men, with their guns drawn, spread out looking for Batman throughout the bank. Batman still was taking them out one by one. His detective mode was showing eight armed men. And then, as Batman gets into a more secured location, he says to Oracle, Oracle. 
I see a giant electrified floor pad by the bank vault. See if he can get it working again. I'm going to try to get Two Faces guys on it, and then I'll signal you when they're on it. Oracle acknowledges and says to Batman that she was already in the security system of the bank and has access to the CCTV cameras and is trying to get the floor pad working. Luckily for Batman, tonight he had packed the Sonic Shock Batarang and he quickly pulls it out and throws it on the floor in front of the bank vault. Soon the sonic shock battering began emitting a high frequency noise to draw on its targets. Two of Two Faces men hear it and quickly run over to the area where the sonic shock battering was at. They see it and they say on the radio, Hey guys, we found something of Batman here. When the men grabs the sonic shock battering and he looks at it as it was still making noise, then Batman activates it, causing it to overload and send out a massive shock that blows up and takes out both men. Soon, the rest of Two-Face's men arrive to where the two unconscious men were at. They see them unconscious, and they're all standing on the shock pad. And then Batman signals Oracle, and Oracle activates the shock pad, and they were all taken out. Meanwhile, inside the garbage truck, sitting in the passenger seat, was Two-Face. He was screaming at his men on the radio to come in, but no one responded. Then he signals a man in the driver's seat to take off. And sure enough, the man starts up the garbage truck, and the garbage truck begins to pull out and drive off. Then Batman runs out to the front of the bank and sees that the garbage truck was getting away. He signals his new winter Batmobile to come to him, and soon the chase ensues. The winter Batmobile began to catch up to the stolen garbage truck and then Batman hits the touch screen and soon the missile systems were activated. Batman sees the truck on the touch screen display and he taps the image of the bottom half of the truck and soon the new missiles lock on to that area. Then the winter Batmobile fires a missile. The missile hits the bottom of the garbage truck, taking out everything. Inside the passenger compartment of the garbage truck, the two men felt the explosion from the missile impact, and then the driver sees all the warning lights come on, and then he says to Two-Face, Boss, it's not looking good. And then he begins to slam the brakes. No brakes. And then he begins to try to shift gears. It was not working. And he says to Two-Face, Two-Face, we're out of control. And I can't hit the brakes and I can't shift it into park. Then Two-Face opens the passenger door of the garbage truck and leaps out. As soon as he hit the cold, icy pavement, he rolls. The driver did the same thing. And now both men were out on the cold streets as the dump truck just goes off on its own until it crashes into a building. Sure enough, both men see the winter Batmobile pull up and stop, and then Two-Face, armed with his AK-47, began firing at the winter Batmobile, and the driver, armed with a shotgun, began firing at the Batmobile. Then, suddenly, the Batmobile activated its blinders, and soon its LED headlights flashed so bright it temporarily blinded both men. But Batman was not in the Batmobile and he soon glides in on the scene and glide kicks the driver and the kick sends the driver flying right into Two-Face knocking him down. The driver was knocked out and then Batman quickly ran up to Two-Face who was trying to get up from the ground and he knocks Two-Face out cold. Then he says to Oracle, Oracle, inform the police I'm going to leave two cuffed men in front of 1960 Bray Fogle Boulevard. 
Oracle acknowledges, and then the next morning on the news, Two-Face's arrest made the headlines, and as Bruce was sitting down watching the morning news, Alfred comes in and he asks Bruce, so Master Bruce, how did the new Winter Batmobile perform? And Bruce says, it performed beautifully, Alfred. Like and subscribe, the end.